this is Leslie and Des, and we are here with Rachel Wood. We're super excited. Um, Rachel is going to be one of our um, artist instructors at our Joyfield Arts and Crafts Virtual Summer Camp coming up in July 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. We're so excited to have her here with us and share share her with you all. Um, we're looking forward to hearing about Rachel and her creative process and um, her workshops that she's going to be teaching at camp and just all the all the things she's got going on. She's just such a such a special human being, and I'm just really happy that she's here with us today. So, Rachel, take it away. Hi, thank you so much for having me, you guys. I'm super excited about camp. It's going to be so fun. There's, they are such an amazing list of artists that you guys have, and it's such an eclectic variety. I think that's why camp is going to be so fun, is because there's so many different options. Like if you, you know, the work that Leslie makes is so different than mine, and it's just cool to see that like there's literally going to be something for everybody. And two, it can introduce you to a type of art or a medium that you've never tried before. So I'm super excited about it. It's going to be really fun. But yeah, I'm here in my studio. I am also from Oregon as well. Um, but behind me is a painting that I just started yesterday. And so I'm going to be kind of working on this painting as, as we're going along with the questions. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited. You know, it's like, it's interesting because um, I think camp is going to be, you know, we're going to, it's for, it's, it's really for all levels. So, you know, the, some people that are just showing up and they've just, they just don't know how to start something. Um, mm -hmm. And it's easy to sometimes become intimidated, I think, by um, the, the process of creating an art. And I, I love that you're going to show something because the, the, um, you know, just blending and and being able to create sort of like this backdrop that that you've done, mm -hmm. that that is like can be kind of overwhelming for some people. Of like, how do you do that? Yeah, so that's one of the classes I'll be teaching in camp, which is just blending with acrylics. So I was just before we hit the record button, I was telling Leslie and Des that one of the things that I love about painting is the blending part of it. But a lot of artists will use oils or they think that the only, you know, paints that can blend well are oils. And I personally don't like to use oils because they're expensive, they're messy, they smell bad, and they notoriously take a really long time to dry. I don't have that kind of time or that kind of patience. So <laughs> and, it's, and because it's cheap too, it's easy to get. And there's different grades of paints, of course, but I love acrylics. And I do truly believe that you can get a beautiful level of blended pigments from acrylics. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't, and you really don't need hardly any equipment. You need a good brush, a rag, and a little bit of water in the paint colors that you like. That's it. And so I'm really excited to be able to teach that class just because I think in terms of trying to get a certain look, or if you are just starting out as a painter and you're just like, I have no clue how to do this. How do they make those colors look so smooth? Mine looks super broken up. I just want it to look smooth and soft and pretty. I'll teach you how to make the soft and pretty. It'll be fun. Oh, I love that. I also, I really like what you said too, that I think that sometimes there's a misconception that um, you have to have a lot of supplies or that, you know, it's really expensive. And, you know, the, it's, it, you can get carried away, yes. And oh. you can buy, I mean, there's a, a wide range of different types of materials, like anything. There's, you know, there's the, the, the bottom shelf and the top shelf, but, you know, a lot of things on the bottom shelf Work, well, it tastes just as good as the top shelf. <laughs> so. right? One of my favorite artists, she tells this story all the time. When she started out, she basically inherited, she's a, she's a really well-known artist now, but she inherited a literal box of just like, you know, art supplies that were picked up otherwise at like a cheap craft store. And she, that's how she started her painting journey. She started with just this box of stuff that literally ended up in their items or in their stuff when they moved. They didn't even, it just like randomly ended up there. It wasn't theirs. She was like, I don't know who this is, but it's like this box of art supplies. And so she started using it and she started a business from utilizing these otherwise easily available products. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have, you need to go out and invest $200 on a set of brushes and a, and a couple of paints. Certainly not. 
And what I'm going to be teaching as well, I will have, you don't even need to have Canvas. You can just do it on paper. So. Awesome. I love that. I can't, see what, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good. I am excited. And then the other class I'm going to be teaching is the, um, the intuitive painting class. Um, I make this other style of painting that is really fun and it is basically starting out with a single color palette and color palettes for beginners are actually really easy to find. I think one of the biggest mistakes that anybody who is a beginner painter or even amateur, they will come and they'll have this set of paint in front of them and they're like, I don't know which one to use or I don't know how to make these colors like go together and so there is some level of intuitive movement when you're trying to make the strokes but starting with a color palette that is pre-made ahead of time that you can just find on pinterest makes your life a thousand times easier and you get to choose and decide ahead of time oh yeah that looks really good or oh that's the vibe i'm going for or whatever and so we can come with these pre-made color palettes and know ahead of time that these colors combined together are going to look good and then we'll take it to the canvas or the paper and I'll show you how to make these kind of this type of painting that is really fun. It takes zero technical skill of any kind. And if you just have a couple of different sizes of brushes, you'll be golden. It'll be really, really fun. And the intuitive part behind it is that you just get to kind of indiscriminately make marks all over the canvas and just have fun with it. Oh, I, I, I like that. I like also how it like um, you're really combining sort of um, but like structure with um, the with freedom kind of, or um, with like the predetermined color palette. You know, I I tend to be maybe a little less structured um, in things, just maybe just in life in general. Uh, <laughs> I usually too, but I discovered that skill. I totally know what you mean because that's what I used to do, and it was funny because early on in my artistic journey. I figured out, I was like, why do all my paintings look like they more or less are the same color palette? <laughs> you know, like, I wasn't doing it intentionally. And so then once I was able to identify and like, hey, oh, there's these other pre-made color palettes or there's, pro there's easy free applications out there that can generate color palettes for me. One of my favorite things, and I bet you guys would actually love this too. There's a application that's online it's completely free it's called color mind and basically what you can do with it is if you say you have like a specific color in mind that you want to use and you're like I don't know what colors go well with this you can plug that color in and it will generate four more colors for you that go appropriately with that color and then maybe it generates you know it does a shuffle of the deck essentially and it's like ooh. then you say oh I like this other color that it generated you can lock in those two colors and then it will generate more colors based on the ones that you've selected already. And so, and you can shuffle it more or less as many times as you want. It's really cool, but it's always to keep in mind that like, if, if nothing else, that color theory will save your bacon from help it from, and it will keep you from creating something that you look at and you're just like, mm, that doesn't look right. You know, it just helps you make it so that you're like, I know that this will look good just based on the color ahead of time. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. also just, well, I, I think that the, the idea of like the, having the structure to begin with, it really frees up your ability to have that intuitiveness, to have that, that free exactly. flowing because you don't have to think about what colors you've exactly. like picked them ahead of time you've got them there on your palette mm -hmm. and now now you can just go for it you don't have to you know spend too much time like do i should i put this in there should i put that in there should i go get this other color it's like already there and it really frees up frees up the, your space in your mind to just to yeah. just go <laughs> i can't tell you how many times i've sat there with either the blank piece of paper or the blank canvas and just been like and felt afraid, felt afraid to actually make, make a mistake or make a mark. And one of the things that is really funny about painting, and I learned this actually partly from both painting, but also like weirdly podcasting. When you're making podcasts, you always have the opportunity to like, if you mess up, it's fine. You can just keep recording and repeat what you were saying. And then you can go back later and edit it. And painting is the same way. If you mess up, it's fine. You just paint over it. It's not a big deal. 
And it's, I know it can feel like, oh, I have to do it right the first time, but that is just truly not the case. And that's what I love about the, that painting process is like, okay, if I feel like I'm going to mess it up, where can I like, you know, take steps to say, or like kind of structure it slightly in my mind so that I can be freed up to allow this thing to move more freely. Because if I'm, it's almost like driving. If I'm like hesitating as I'm doing it, it's going to be like, oh, 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 and it's not going to feel natural. And we want it to feel natural. We want it to be fun. That's the whole point of why we're doing this, right? Awesome. Yeah. So what do you, tell us what you're doing right now. You're making, you're doing some marks on your... Yeah, so this painting is going to be kind of like an abstracted landscape. One, that's something I've been really into lately is doing these. You could call it a landscape. It's not necessarily a landscape. You can do whatever you want, call it whatever you want. But I love this idea of really just finding A, your color palette that works well together, but then B, also thinking about how does the painting make me, how do I want the painting to make me feel? And with all of the pieces, the kind of overarching theme for me is I want the feeling of like taking a big breath and then that exhalation, that sigh, like, ah, it's like, I want the painting to create a sensation of peace. And that peace might look a little bit different for everybody. And so this, this one, I really love the colors. It's kind of pink and orange, and there's going to be some deeper greens in here and a little bit more like punchy orange down at the bottom. Um, and lots of great contrast. And so I really like these pieces that aren't overly complicated. They're actually really simple to make. Um, they do have a couple of layers of paint on them, but they're not something that I'm spending, you know, weeks at a time to create. They're something I can, you know, create within a less than a week easily, just spending a few hours a day on it. But I really, really like this style of painting just because it makes me feel like, oh, I can, this is approachable. It feels straightforward. And I am thinking in the most simplest terms of like, when I look at a photograph of a landscape, what am I seeing in terms of just like the color block, right? I see the bright light of the sky. I'm seeing the darkness of the land and whatever is in the foreground, whether that's grass or flowers or water, then I put that right at the very bottom. And that tends to be like a, 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 a mid-tone between the high contrast and the low contrast top and middle so that's all I do it's not really complicated it's pretty easy but you just get a feel for it after a while yeah, yeah. well I love how you just like I mean you really break it down in a very approachable way I mean because when you when you see your finished work and hopefully you'll show some of that it's like I mean it's really outstanding you're you're a wonderful artist and your work is fabulous um so to hear you say to to break it down like this and make it in a, a very approachable way for really anyone to come in and start you know playing and you know really Getting, I like what you said about feel, feeling it. I've really been into this, um, the concept of, of working with your, how you feel. How does it make you feel? How do you want to feel? Um, instead of spending so much time in your head, really leading with that, that feeling, that feeling part to let that lead you. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious too, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you've told me this before, but I'm drawing a blank. How did you get started? So I started painting when I was in and really just started taking art classes like a lot of people when I was in high school, you know, they had art programs in my school. I started taking drawing and ceramics. And then when I was in college, I was actually going to school to be a nurse. And then I when when I had kind of a gap in uh, classes, I took an I did an art minor. So I took drawing principles of design, painting, um, calligraphy, more ceramics. And just got my, really got my feet wet in that world. I didn't go to art school or anything like that, but I have had about that much formal education around <laughs> it. And so, yeah, very small. And so I started doing this in my spare time when I was still working as a nurse. And it was really this big stress reliever for me. I felt like I had all this pent up energy and emotion, and I didn't know how to express it. I couldn't use there wasn't words to say what I was feeling. And so I just felt like I needed to, you know, do it somehow. And I tried all the other like normal things like, oh, journal it out, exercise, whatever. And none of that stuff really fit. It didn't really do anything for me in terms of 
feeling like I needed to get that, have that creative outlet and express the way that I was feeling. And I just, I truly just didn't have words for it. And so coming to the canvas and coming to my painting was really the way that I was able to express that stuff. And now many years later, I've really embraced it as like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And this is what really sets my heart on fire every single day to come in here and create work or to be able to share it with other people. So yeah, that's how I came to it. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> you guys want me to show you a couple of finished pieces? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't shown this fully finished piece to anybody yet. So you guys will be the first ones. So this is the first one. I'm making these as a little series. I've got a third one I'm going to be starting soon, but I just finished this one yesterday. So this is finished. Haven't even varnished it yet. But it's the like, same thing. It's kind of like this little mini landscape. You could call it a landscape. If you don't want to call it that, it's not that. It's whatever you want it to be. But I love I love abstract work for that exact reason, that it can just be whatever you decide it is. <laughs> I love that. Well, as soon as you brought it up, I was like, oh, you're using, that's the same color palette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely see that. And I like, and I see it as a landscape. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, like you were just saying, I mean, you know, it's really the individual's interpretation as to whether there's somebody that's maybe purchasing art or there's someone that's creating it. You know, it's different for everybody. And some someone might see that, you know, going the other direction, yeah. or, you know, or like, uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if once in a while, maybe you do that. You start something and you're like, oh, I think this should be the top. Yeah, exactly. I've done that before where I've made things and then I'm like, I'll rotate it and I'll be like, hmm, do I like this better this way? Do I like it better this way? I'm not sure. And, and oftentimes I'll start, I'll eventually come back to the original orientation that I started with, but I always do consider that, like which way looks better? Is this actually better like on a different angle? But here I'll show you another one. Somebody told me this um, recently, this is a large piece, so I'll just show you as much of it as I can. <laughs> recently told me that this looks like a map I, I was like oh. they were like it looks like the united like this looks like north america and this looks like the rest of it and i was like oh that's interesting so i just finished this piece also last week but i'll show you a couple more too i finished this one right after we got back from hawaii oh <laughs> i like it very like dark and moody, but I really, really like this piece. And I, and I've just been really into this style lately. It just like, like I said, it just feels like a breath of fresh air. So that's what I've been working. This is kind of where I've been and where I've been working on, but yeah. I like that. The, the one that you showed right before that, that said that you said some people had mentioned that it looked like a map. And I don't know, my first thing, I, the first thing that I thought was angels. I don't know why that was my first, my first thought. I was like, no, that makes me think of angels. <laughs> I love that. I love that because honestly, like every single time I make a piece, it's somebody always says something different about it. And I love hearing that. I, and really and truly part of the reason why I make abstract work is because I think that it gives the viewer, whether it's a purchaser or somebody who's just looking at it, I think it gives more opportunity to have a deeper conversation about it rather than, oh, I painted a picture of a still life apple. The conversation ends there. There's nothing to say about it. It's an apple. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> or you know, if it's just something that it's just like, oh yeah, that's that's nice. But if you are open to having a conversation, like, what do you see in this? What do you think that this is? You know, then it really gives the, it gives somebody who may not be, you know, necessarily know a whole lot about art. It gives them the opportunity to have a, to form their own opinion about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of, for some reason, it just sort of popped in my mind. Maybe it's because I was just over visiting a friend in the Tri-Cities and we went wine tasting. But it's kind of that idea of like, um, one, it's, when you have somebody that's a good, a good guide or a good facilitator to, to put those things out there. Like if you, you're, you're asking someone, what do you see or how does it make you feel? It's kind of the idea of like, when you go to a winery and if you have somebody that's, um, you know, really open to having a discussion with you and they're willing to let you choose your own descriptions of things of mm -hmm. like, oh, that tastes fruity or that tastes whatever. And like allowing, 
allowing you to make your own decisions instead of having them made for you. Um, I, I kind of, I like that idea that you're not, you're not giving a predetermined idea Mm -hmm. of what it's supposed to be or what it's supposed to make you feel or what it's supposed to taste like. You're leaving it up to the individual to create their own feelings. Exactly. It's just giving them the opportunity to have their own experience with it. I, it's funny though, because I, there's a specific painting that remind it, that kind of reminds me of this idea um, that it's a painting. Of, it's like, a, I learned about an art history class. I don't remember who the artist is, but it's basically like a, a painting of a pipe, like a smoking pipe. And in French, it says underneath it, this is not a pipe. <laughs> and it's just like that playing off of that idea of like, I've painted this thing, but it's not, I'm telling you, it's not what you think that it is. <laughs> I feel like, um, I just feel so inspired by you. I'm like, I'm like, I want to paint right now. <laughs> well, I'm so, I'm so excited for camp. It's awesome. It's honestly going to be so great. And it's, I think that for anybody that attends, they're going to absolutely, obviously have a great time. But it's just going to be probably more than they expected, because I know any time that I've taken classes where I was either a beginner or had only, you know, very limited knowledge in what I was doing, I always get so much out of it because there's just so much that you're like genuinely, you know, unaware of through no fault of your own, of course, but there's so much stuff that you don't know. And so get, being able to get your feet wet in learning a little bit more than just like, you know, what you might get from a YouTube video or something, when you're actually able to get your hands in there and, and really take some time with it and have the opportunity to ask questions, it can help things click. I myself am a very hands-on and kinetic learner. And so I know that, you know, it's one thing to learn about color theory, or it's one thing to see somebody like a Bob Ross painting, like you watch somebody do it. But doing it for yourself is something entirely different. So I think that's partly why camp is going to be so cool. Yeah. And, you know, like, I I mean, I've been painting for over 20 years now, but my, what I do is so different. And, you know, I, I'm so excited about all the, um, the different workshops and classes and the opportunities to try new things. And I think that as, you know, somebody that actually, you know, that has been doing for me, like I've been, I've been doing a lot of the same work of, you know, painting on glass for 20 some years. And it's, sometimes it's easy to, you just kind of get stuck, you know, like your creativity can feel less, less flowy and being able to, um, you know, even if you are an, an established artist or you're, you've been painting for a long time or doing your craft for a long time, just being able to like experience something from someone else's eyes and someone else's perspective on how to do something is really a gift because it sparks things, you know, it kind of like, Ooh, I, I hadn't thought of that before. What a cool idea. You know, I want to try that. So I think from the running the gamut of, you know, just somebody that's literally never picked up a brush um, because they've just maybe hadn't thought of it, hadn't had time, or maybe just were just a little intimidated to, you know, the artist that's perhaps been painting for 30 years. There's something in it for everybody. And um, super, yeah, I'm just really, I'm really excited about it. Although is excited. I'm like, I keep telling Des, I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to take this class and I'm going to take this class. And then she's like, you know, you actually have to work at camp too, right? (laughs) 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 So I, um, you know, for each day, you know, the three days, there's going to be three live classes that people get to, will get to choose from. They get to create their own schedule and we'll have like a, a morning class, a late morning class and an afternoon class. Mm -hmm. over the three days so there'll be like nine live classes that they get to take during camp but then you know there's going to be 30 classes and workshops to choose from so that you actually have the ability after camp to go in and take all of them which is what I'm going to be doing (laughs) because I'm probably going to have to be like I don't know working on something in between when I'm teaching my own classes but I really like that and like you know what you're saying you know being able to have that kind of hands-on experience and answer questions and things like that. And even if somebody doesn't, you know, isn't taking uh, 
a particular workshop live during camp, a lot of times people will ask the same questions. So being able to watch it later or being able to stop to stop and you know put a little stop you know put a pause on the record and then go back and even just being like what you're doing to go through and take your workshop and then go back and be able to watch you going through it again that you want to add to it i just i just think it's such a great opportunity for people to really be able to experience um different different mediums and different ways to to create so yeah well and to be honest i think this is it i think that this is such a cool opportunity really because what you guys are doing is actually super unique like it's one thing to you know to watch other people do this like i said on youtube or you know you go to an event and somebody's painting live or whatever like i've seen that kind of stuff but i think that it just makes the idea of taking an art class so much more approachable it's, you know, especially in this last year when everybody's been so like hunkered down, this is a step that makes it feel like we can still be social, but it feels really approachable because I know that, again, this is an area that a lot of people may have vulnerability around. And so being able to kind of dip your toes into it can be a little, a little smaller stepping stone that feels more comfortable because prior to this last year, I would have, there was, I would have never seen anything like this before. And it would have been, if you wanted to take an art, like an actual art class from somebody, you would have had to like go to a, you know, a community college or like, or a community center and be really like, um, more, more proactive about it. But I feel like this is nice because this is such a easy, approachable thing to do. And in all honesty, there's no reason for me. I'm like, there's no reason not to do it. <laughs> If you're interested in art and you're interested in just in, you know, whether it's for you or your kids or both, like there's literally no reason not to do it. And it's like a way cheaper than, than taking a community class. And you honestly will probably get the exact same amount of information and instruction than you would if you were to take like an entire semester class. I mean, yeah. I would be willing to bet. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I totally agree with you. Um, so yeah, I think it's, we're really excited about it. Okay. Tell us what you've got, what you're working on now. Tell us what okay. you're doing. So now, cause this is going to be my sky. I'll probably come back in and because I only did a single layer on this, I'll probably come back in and add some more embellishment, so to speak because this is really, really soft, but this is just the backdrop layer. We want this to have a little bit more, um, more not necessarily like texture, but more visual interest. If there's, if there's a lot of stuff going, down, uh, going on down here that has more definitive lines, and this is all just super like blurred essentially at the top, you're not, your eye is not gonna linger here. It's gonna just drop here every single time. And one of the, and I'm sure you guys know this, one of the principles of design is that you want to make sure that your eyes are continuously moving around the painting. You don't want your eyes to get stuck on the same spot all the time. So if I were to stop and finish this right here, my eyes would get stuck down here every single time. But the idea being that with lines, lines help to create movement. We wanna utilize the lines and the lines of the, that we can create with our brush to actually help our eyes move around the painting. And I'll talk more about that in the, um, in both classes that I'm gonna teach actually, because it's important for both, um, in teaching how to utilize that concept of like, and just using your own eyes, taking a minute away from it and then coming back to it, looking at it and just noticing where does my eye go first and where does it travel? And if you're not, if you're like my eyes getting drawn to the same spot over and over and over again, or if the painting feels off balance, like it does right now, there's something wrong and it doesn't look quite right, or it doesn't look even, or it doesn't feel as cohesive as it could. So that's what I always start with is like, I'll put a backdrop layer on, we move to the kind of middle ground and foreground area. And then we do the kind of la big last step of like looking at the thing as a whole, what feels wrong, what feels like it's missing, or not quite right, and then we make adjustments from there. And theoretically, that should be kind of it. That should be the end. That's such yeah. great information. I mean, yeah. I know it just kind of flows off your tongue because it, it's like you know it so well. But you know, those are like that right there is just a lengthy checklist of really good information um, for people. Just in that, you know, like the. Uh, 
60 seconds of, of ex <laughs> explanation, you touched on so many really important things. And that is just like, I mean, that's a great gift uh, to people that are, whether they're just learning or they're, you know, been painting for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I'm so I'm curious, you were talking about um, doing your podcast. Do you want to tell us about your podcast or where we can find you? Where people yeah. can, I know where to find you, but where can other people find you? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you can find me over on rachelwoodart.com. It's www.rachelwoodart.com. I am also here on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, um, Rachel Wood Fine Artist. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram. My handle is at realist, R-E-A-L-E-S-T underscore Rach. And then my podcast is called the Becoming You Podcast. And you can find it wherever, on whatever podcast app that you listen to. But if you type in Becoming You, Rachel Wood, you'll find it. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. And I love to share. I share as much as I can on all of those platforms. And I also have an Etsy shop. And so if you go to either my Facebook or my Instagram, you'll find the link for all that stuff as well. But yeah, I just love sharing. And I really am excited for camp to be able to show kind of more the ins and outs of what actually goes into this stuff because I think again it's kind of one of those things with art you don't know what you don't know and there is actually a lot that goes into it and there's a lot involved and so just being able to show somebody kind of take those glasses off so that they can see more clearly because I know that for me when I was first starting out and I was just beginning to take art classes for the first time it felt frustrating to say the least when you have this awesome vision in your head and you can't make it come out on the page it's really annoying <laughs> and you're like why can't I do this why can't I make this work so to speak and the number of people that are just naturally amazingly talented and they draw exactly what they see those people are the rarest of unicorns they do exist my cousin is one of them but they are the rarest of unicorns and most people do need in some level of instruction and mostly conceptual understanding of what it is that we're doing and then the opportunity to apply it. So that's what we're going to do at camp, whether you're doing glass painting with Les or you're going to be doing uh, acrylic painting with me, it doesn't matter, but it's going to be so, so good. I'm really excited, you guys. Awesome. Well, so are we. We're really, we're really happy and just really happy to have you part of our community with our artist market and now with camp um and i think because you started with our first artist market last um november and then we had our one in the spring and we'll be having another one coming up again for the holidays and <laughs> camp and just all the things we're so excited to to keep um you know to keep growing with you and all what we've got happening in the future and we're just happy to have you part of our little family yeah. yeah i'm so excited i'm so glad and i'm so glad that you guys found me it's the best you guys are so awesome and encouraging and thank you oh. for inviting me to do this I'm, I'm oh sure. yeah so do you have anything else you want to ask rich um no i think that was it i'm super excited i you know this whole um you know camp experience of you know i've i've done so many of the you know paint nights where you're painting a specific mm -hmm. thing and i'm so excited to learn how to you know kind of free my mind and and paint something without you know having to create your own yeah creating my own and instead of which is going I, to be more hard for me but i'm excited about it are so cool however if you're a, a judgmental Jenny like myself, and not judgmental of other people, but judgmental of yourself, when you like see somebody's really cool painting and then you make your own and you're like, mine doesn't look like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> that is, it's, it's, it can be like discouraging. And so that's why I think like, and then and the classes that I'm going to be teaching, I my intention is not for their painting, my, or the students' paintings to look like mine because I want them to have their own painting as opposed to like, oh, it's supposed to look like Rachel's. Not supposed to look like mine, supposed to look like yours, whatever that is. And so there's no judgment around it. One of them, I will always remember this forever and ever, and this will probably be like the last thing I say, but when I was a kid, um, my uncle and my brother and I used to go over to my uncle's house all the time and he loved to draw like cartoons. And he, you know, when you're kids, he'd pull out his pencils and paper and he'd let me and my brother draw as well. And one of the things, and my little brother was, you know, typical little brother, snot-nosed kid. And 
he, I looked at his drawing and I was like, yours isn't very good. It's bad. You know, it's just a mean taunting sister. And my uncle said something that I'll remember forever. He said, it's not bad. It's just different. And I was like, oh, that's, he's right. It's just different. And that's what I love about art so much. I don't believe that there is bad art it's simply just different everyone has different tastes and preferences and so I want to give people the opportunity to create the art that they like yeah, yeah. I love that well I mean because it is it is so true and it's very it's an individual it's an individual thing um, you know and it people just see nobody is the same. We're all uniquely ourselves. And that goes along with our creative processes. And even if you don't know what your creative process is yet, this is opportunities to help, you know, lure, lure the creativity out and give you a safe place to, to play and to try. And for those that need a little structure like that she really likes structure i know she like perked up when you said you get to pick out your palette ahead of time like you have a little <laughs> app that like tells you what colors to go together and that's right up her alley <laughs> it's definitely, it's i'll show it'll i'll show it right up in class but also just color mind google color mind you'll it'll you'll find it it's really awesome. cool so yeah. well um, thank you so much and you we'll let you get back to completing your 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 trifecta there and i'll be sure to update when i finish this one okay. oh awesome yeah. well thank you thank you so much rachel we really appreciate you we're happy to have you here with us and um yeah we're just excited to have you at camp and i can't wait to take your class and um yeah and just you just have such great energy and you're just oh, adorable yes okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, sounds good. Bye. Bye. Bye.